Hey everybody and welcome to this, my second of two videos on the Asahi Pentax Model K. In the first video we talked about what all of the things on this camera are. In this video we're going to talk about what all of them do. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about mounting and unmounting your lens. It has an M42 mount, so all you have to do to take a lens off is unscrew it counter or anti-clockwise until you can remove it. And then to put a new lens back on you just attach it clockwise until it stops. It should thread on nice and easily. If it, you're having to force it, that's a problem and you should back it out and try again. And that's mounting and unmounting a lens. Very simple. Next thing we're going to talk about is how to load film and how the film moves through the camera. So we're going to open up the back here and we're going to take a cassette of film, we're going to drop it into the film chamber. We're going to pull out a leader and feed it into one of the slots on the take-up spool. And again, like in the Asahi Pentax video, you'll see that this was very easy for me and that's pretty rare on this channel. So next we're gonna close the film back. And next, make sure to set your film memo for the type of film you have, black and white, daylight balance, tungsten balance, and the speed. Next, rotate this dial, making sure to turn it in the correct direction until you get to a couple of tabs before the zero, just like that. Next, we're going to advance the film three frames until we get to frame one, which is one notch past the zero. And you're ready to take your first frame, just like that. So when you take your pictures, you're gonna go through the process of taking your photos and you're going to get to the very end eventually and rewind your film. Okay, so film is one and done. So you can expose it with a proper shutter speed and aperture to create an image in a controlled manner or in, a, in an uncontrolled manner like this, which would erase your photos from the film. But I want you to see how film moves through the camera. So if you when you take a picture, you advance the film, it comes out of the cassette, moves over the shutter opening, and is taken up by the film take-up spool over here. Just like that. Now, as you can see, if I try to rewind the film now, I'm not going to be able to. I will just break something if I force it. So I have to hold the film rewind button down. And now I can rewind the film because the film rewind release remove dis, disengages the one-way movement of the film tension sprocket. There we go. And then you simply take your film cassette out. And if you, you have another one, you put it in. If you're done shooting for the day, then you just close up your camera's back and make sure that you've triggered the shutter button before you put it away. And the reason that you trigger the shutter button before you put it away is that these are mechanical shutters. When you advance the shutter, you're putting tension on springs that control the timing of the shutter movement, okay? Regardless of what shutter speed you have it on. So you put the tension on the springs by advancing it. Well, if you, if you leave that tension on the springs, over time they'll develop a memory and instead of moving quickly like they're supposed to, to to control the shutter speed, they'll move more slowly and your shutter speeds will be off or that you'll have shutter capping or shutter lag, things like that, which impair your ability to get a proper exposure from your camera. So let's talk about using a flash with the Asahi Pentax K. I'm not gonna take the cap off of here because it's kind of a, yeah, it's there. But uh, there's no hot shoe, so if you're gonna use a flash, you're gonna plug it into the X sync. Now, if you, there is an FP sync here, if you watch my video on the Asahi Pentax, then there's a, an explanation of how FP bulbs work. And you can just go to the flat, open that up in a, another ta uh, tab and go straight to that section by clicking on the link in the description. You can understand how FP bulbs work. Um, I'm not gonna explain it again because I literally just covered it in the Asahi Pentax video. But with the X flash, you want to set your camera's shutter speed to X. Up here on the fast dial, there is an X speed, 
And that is the correct speed for flash sync with a modern flash. You can also use any of the slow speed settings on this lower dial, and we'll go over how to use that in just a moment. The reason is because shutter speed is not a factor of how quickly the shutter curtains move. The curtains will always move at the same speed across the film plane, regardless of your shutter speed. Shutter speed is a factor of the amount of time between when the first curtain opens and then the second curtain closes, right? And then you advance the film. So at one, at the X sync speed, which is 1 50th, you get the first curtain opening, the film, the entire film plane is exposed to light for a 50th of a second, and then the second curtain closes. But you cannot use 1 60th of a second on this, even though it's close and is a typical flash time because the X sync speed on this camera controls the timing of when the flash fires. So if you use anything faster than X, you're not gonna get properly timed exposures. If you used one 1,000th of a second, what happens is your two curtains are moving together very closely. So if you triggered the flash, then somewhere along the line, you'd get a properly exposed sliver of negative and everything else would be dark because the curtains would be blocking it. So that's why you have to use the X speed or slower. And you can get away with using slower because the longer the shutter time, the longer the gap between the first and second curtain. And the, the X speed is simply the fastest time at which the entire film plane is exposed to light and both curtains are retracted for a very, very brief, nearly instantaneous period before the curtain closes. I mean, nearly instantaneous, it's about 1 50th of a second, but you get my gist. So let's say you were gonna use this camera and wanted to use a flash with it. What you would have to do is get a flash bar, which is basically a metal bar that connects to the tripod bushing on the bottom of the camera and sticks out to the side and then has another tripod quarter 20 screw over here. Over on this side of the flash bar, you'd need a little adapter, which is a little hot shoe adapter that has a cable coming out of it to connect to the X port. And then there's a tripod bushing in the bottom of that adapter that screws into the bar. And then the flash sits over here on the side and you'd want to get an articulating flash to bounce it off the walls or ceiling, ideally. And that is the flash rig you would use for a camera like this. Uh, you'd have to connect it through the, the socket. If You could also, if you have a camera flash with a PC cable on it, plug it in directly and then hand hold that flash if you were able to use a fixed focal distance with this lens and didn't have to adjust focus between each shot. And so for instance, if you wanted to, as a, as a novelty, take photos of people doing that, all of your photos would basically just be framed the exact same way uh, as you would need to set your focal distance early and stick with it. So that's flash use with the Pentax K. The next thing let's talk about is how to adjust shutter speeds because they, uh, it's a weird interface, this two dial system. So the first thing is that the slow speed dial has precedence over the fast speed dial. So if I set this to X and I have the slow speed dial at 1 30th, then uh, you get your X flash sync speed. If I set this to 1 120, if I set this to 1 1 25th, and this is at 1 30th, I get 1 1 25th. But if I set this to 1 full second, I get a 1 second exposure. So basically, what you need to do, so, so if you wanna shoot faster than the 30th, you don't have to do anything up here, you just have to adjust the slow speed dial. If you wanna shoot 1 30th, you have to set this to 1 30th, and then you have to set the fast speed dial to 1 30th as well, and that's your 1 30th of a second shutter speed. So it's a bit of a, a, bit of a wonky interface that they did away with in the next generation of cameras, but was still in place for this one. So one of the other nice things that this camera has on it is a T, T setting, which is here on the front. 
I'm going to show you how that works because it's a very, very nice thing to use for things like astrophotography or star trails. And when you push the shutter button, and you can now walk away, the shutter stays open until you advance it. And then it closes. There we go. Just like that. So time is like bulb, only with bulb, you've got to hold the, the shutter down, the, shut, the uh, shutter button down the whole time in order, well, that didn't work. There we go, that worked. So with bulb, you have to hold the shutter button down. There's another distinction you might have noticed watching this. And let's, I'll, I'll, I'll let you see if you can catch this. So in bulb, now I'm going to switch to time. The advance feels different, and you might have noticed a difference in the curtain. So when I push the shutter button for time, this curtain's going to open this direction. It's slow enough, you can actually kind of see it. At least in person, I don't know if the frame rate of the camera allows that. Now when I advance the film, the curtain's going to come out from this direction and close. But if I go back to bulb, let's try that again. Curtain opens this way, release, curtain closes that way, and now it advances like normal. So uh, time also changes the way in which the shutter mechanism physically operates when you use it. So let's go through everything that we've just looked at and talk about how to take a photo with the Pentax K. It is a fully manual camera. The first thing you're going to need to do is take a light meter reading of the scene with a handheld light meter or a cell phone light meter. Use the Sunny 16 rule if you're outside in full sun, or just kind of eyeball it, uh, which is what I do a lot of the time. So doing that, you'll then know what your aperture and shutter speed should be. So let's assume your aperture should be f5.6, but you want to make sure that you have armed your lens here so that you can focus with the aperture wide open. And let's assume that your shutter speed should be 1 500th because at 1 1,000th, that dial, at least on mine, doesn't like to fully rest flush. Yeah, it doesn't. There it goes. Oh, there, now it's uh, at 1 500th. Okay. Um, at any rate, so you set your shutter speed, you set your aperture, You've got this open, so you can focus wide open, and then you're going to focus your lens to, oh, okay, that's, that's good, that's what needs to be in focus. And then you hit the shutter button to take your picture. And the process is that when you push the shutter button, that flappy paddle goes up and the mirror starts to go up. That flappy paddle causes the aperture to stop down while the mirror is going up so that aperture is closed when the shutter action happens. It's really... The engineering behind this, given that it was done by hand, may, maybe a calculator, probably not, but maybe, um, is really, really amazing. The mechanical engineering genius that went into this design is, um, is really inspiring. So great cameras, to say the least. Um, the next thing, now that we've taken a single exposure, is we're going to take a double exposure with this camera. So the double exposure includes both science and technology. There is, an, there is a, a process and a thought and, and a, a correct way to do it. So if you take a single exposure, let's say that this is a proper exposure. It's 1 1 25th at f5.6. Well, we'll just, just set that as a reminder. Okay. If you were to take two frames that are properly exposed at this setting, you'd get a very thick, dense, dark negative that would digitize poorly with artifacts and low contrast, and that would print in the, in the dark room slowly and also with low contrast. So what you need to do for a double exposure is cut the amount of light in half. There are two ways to do that. You can adjust the aperture closed one stop from f5.6 to f8, or you can 
make the shutter speed one stop faster from 1 one twenty fifth to 1 two fiftieth. Because these are fractions, a double, the, the higher the number, the shorter the time. 1 two fiftieth of a second is half as long as 1 one twenty fifth. You take your first frame, you want to then hold the film rewind knob, the film release button, this is very important, and then advance the film. Now, take your second frame, and holding nothing, you advance the film. The film will not start moving as quickly as it does when everything's going smoothly, because the process of, of holding the rewind button down causes the gearing to get out of alignment, so it takes a partial frame for the film to start moving again and be taken up on the take-up spool. So after you've taken your double exposure, you want to stop your lens down to, to the smallest setting, set your shutter speed to the fastest shutter speed, which is not bulb. There we go. Take a picture in advance. And that dead frame means that what's happened is that the film now has a chance to fully advance onto the take-up spool. If you don't take a dead frame, you risk ruining both your double exposure and your next frame by having them partially overlap. So the dead frame is a mandatory part of the double exposure process with this camera. So that is the second of the two video series on the Asahi Pentax K, a beautiful, beautiful camera that was the top of its line at its, in its day with a beautiful shutter sound, wonderful design. It's nice and lightweight, just an absolute joy to use. And if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track, producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have comments or suggestions, please leave those below. That, uh, and I check my comments every couple of days. If you have suggestions for future videos, please leave those below as well. And if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm happy to make those. And one last thing, thank you everybody very much for watching the uh, video manual series on the Asahi Pentax K. And I will see you in the next camera video manual series.